everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today we're going to be creating some walls to add onto our dungeon tiles. As you can see, I already have my dungeon tiles set and ready. If you haven't seen the tutorial for that, I will put the description uh, the link in the description below. So I also did a video on how to add some texture to the tile. So I'll put that link in the description below as well. But today, as you can see, I'm just going to be using the plain tiles. So it's a little bit lesser of geometry to deal with. So whoops, wrong button. So what we'll do is we'll be working with these two by two tiles and going to be adding on walls to it. And of course, if you don't wanna add the walls to the tiles, you can do them separately or make corners or however you wanna do it. Or of course you can add it onto the bigger tiles. My printer, however, is a little bit too small to print this size or this size. So that's why I'm gonna work on the two by two. So hopefully I can print it afterward and possibly upload a video of it later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hide these tiles first so we can just focus on this one to work with. Awesome. So what we want to do first is like, okay, so we have this set up. My scene is in inches. So of course work with whatever you're comfortable in. I will have to convert this to millimeters later because that's what my printer works with. So don't forget to, you know, consider what you'll be working in. And then I set my grid floor scale to be quarter of an inch. So it's a little bit easier just to figure out like visually seeing what I'm looking at. Anyway, okay, so now that that's said, I'm gonna put that there. You kinda wanna think about your wall thickness. So in order for it to stand, I'm probably going to go between quarter of an inch to maybe half an inch. So maybe somewhere in the middle of that for the thickness. So let's go ahead and tab into edit mode. I switch over to vertices select, Z for wireframe, make sure everything is deselected. Whoops, and border select these vertices because I want to branch my wall off from there. So we'll just hit E to extrude. And I want it to be a little thick, so I'm just going to go, I don't want a half an inch. I think that's a little bit too big. So I'm probably just going to go right about there. Obviously this is kind of, I haven't done this before, so it's a little bit trial and error. Like I said, hopefully I can upload a video later of it printing so you can also learn with me and see if this worked out how I intended. So once we have that, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these faces, go into side view, hit E to extrude. I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit and then grab everything, pull that down to match that line. Reselect the wall. And I want my wall to be about probably two inches tall. So what we'll go ahead and do is eight, perfect, yeah. We're probably gonna go ahead and do nine so that way it doesn't include this half an inch so that actually the wall itself is two inches tall. That would probably work better. So now that we have the basic wall structure there, there's three different styles of wall that I thought we could model. It would be really simple to add some wainscoting or paneling like shiplap-esque style. Or obviously, if you're going for a traditional dungeon feel, stone. So first I'm gonna do the wainscoting. So I'm going to duplicate this a couple times. So I don't have to redo that since this is a perfect template. And I'll leave this one as the default. So I'll go ahead and hide that one. So let's focus on this one real quick. Um, so we'll do castle tile. I think I spelled that right. Ship lap. and stone. So go ahead, hide the other two. Give me a little bit more. There we go, now I can see everything. So let's go ahead, tab back into edit mode now that we have our outliner configured or how we need our things named. <laughs> okay, so for wainscoting, if you're not familiar, it's pretty much, um, kind of think of like a chair rail with wooden details at the bottom. So what we'll do is add a loop. So control R and bring that down maybe about there-ish. Looks good. 
add another loop. So that'll be our border. And then control R for the bottom to frame out the actual square itself or rectangle. It's probably going to be rectangle. Add two loops here. Size them along the X axis. Make this side look even as best you can. Looks good. So what we'll do, grab all these faces and these faces. We're just gonna go into the side view, E to extrude, pull that out. So obviously for the top, that's all we need. But for this part, we'll do a little bit more. So just grab these two faces now, of course, if you're interested, if you wanted to use this as like a center wall or something like that, you could make the detail wrap all the way around, but I'm just going to focus on the one side for now. Anyway, so we have our two faces selected. We're going to hit E to extrude again. We are going to make sure that this is set to median point. Set this to individual order origins, sorry, and size that in. I want it kind of thick to make sure it works well. E to extrude, going to side view, Z, uh, so that way we can see through and pull that back to match. Perfect. Cute and simple. Obviously, you can make it a little bit bigger. You can add different little details to it, but that's basically what wainscoting is. So I do like that. I might need to thicken it up a little bit to make sure it prints properly, but I would like to test print this first and then see how it goes. Perfect, so there's one wall done. So we'll go ahead, hide the wainscoting and move over to the shiplap. Okay, for shiplap, again, go ahead, tab into edit mode. And for this one, it's a lot of the same where we're just gonna set up the loops and extrude them, but instead of extruding them out, we will be sizing it in. So shiplap, if you're unfamiliar, does run side to side horizontally and is kind of uh, divisioned off like you would see planks of wood, like a regular wood floor. We're just gonna hit Control R and add in a lot of loops for, actually I like that. You want it kind of thick though. Let's do one less. So I just added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops for where my lines for the shiplap is going to be. And you wanna go ahead and frame around that real quick. So once you have your horizontal line set up, we can figure out where we want our vertical lines for the seams in the paneling. Go ahead and add three lines to each side and then do basically what we already did vertically. So we can get this set up. Now that we have our pattern pretty much all set, we can go ahead and loop select. So alt shift your horizontal lines since you know those are going to be, oops, not that one. It's pulled in, sized in, not extruded in. And let's just go ahead and size those in first. Probably good. Like it, as per usual, you want it to be a little bit dramatic, so I think that's good. Oh, and I did leave this on individual origins. If you have it in on median point, it's all going to pull towards your center. So make sure you have that on individual origins so it does just size to the center. Okay, now that we have that set up, we want to go ahead and get our seams. So for the seams, obviously we don't want these for, well, the vertical seams. We want to go ahead and select a pattern that you like for, oops, adding those in. So I'm just going to do that in there. Oh, and I forgot the top one. Now all we have to do is pull that back. go in a side view to make it a little bit easier about there to match up with the horizontal seams perfect all right and 
there is our wood paneling or shiplap. Obviously, if you wanted some look more like um, regular, like ver you could do it vertically instead. Um, but I wanted it to be sideways. So you could use it like on a ship or in a house, whichever. It's a little bit more versatile this way. Cool. So there is the shiplap. Pretty simple. So we'll go ahead and hide that and we'll go for the stone. So before when I did the textures for the tiles for the stone, I used a program called Crazy Bump, but my free trial for that has run up and I haven't been able to buy a license yet. So unfortunately I can't just apply that for this stone. So what we're gonna do is we can set up our lines and then go into sculpt mode and just kinda add a little bit more detail to it. So just like before tab to go into edit mode and we already have a good center line here. I think I want it to be a little bit chunky so that works great. We're going to pull these in to make it match that width. Oh, it helps if I change this back to medium point. So control R to add in Let's do four. I want the stones kind of thick. Um, and then we have one main line here and then two on the side. So that's great. But I'm going to go ahead and add two loops there and two loops here. And kind of frame it around just like we did with the other panelings. So let's go ahead, grab these and pull in just like before. Oop. Change this back to individual origins and then size in. Oh, but what we probably don't want to do is size along the X axis. So shift X so that way it just goes in that way. So that way the walls will still meet up properly unless you want it to be like a center standing wall or something you can size along the X axis. Just thought of that. Okay, so that looks good. And then what we'll wanna do is just like before, go ahead and grab these. Like I said, we could go into sculpting mode now. So go down here, go to sculpt mode, and you could add all kinds of details to this if you were interested. Obviously, it's not really gonna do anything right now because I don't have enough. So you could check this box and make it go crazy. I think I wanna leave it as is though instead and just test print it before I add too much crazy detail. Of course, if you want to do that feel free i mean do whatever floats your boat but for now i want to go ahead and just test print this as well as the other two so let me unhide those Boop. okay and oh i want to fix this really quick too these are our three different basic wall styles or at least that i came up with really quick if you guys have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments below. Or if you have any tips that are like, oh, you did this, like this will be easier. That would be great. I love like hearing that from you guys for what um, I could do easier to show everyone else. That'd be awesome. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can test print these. And then depending on how the videos turn out, I might end up posting those later. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope this uh, was able to help you out and give you some ideas for your own dungeons. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys next week.